It's been one full year since I got my hands on the Lenovo Legion Pro 9i. This laptop bridges the gap between an Ultrabook's slim design and a more powerful mid-range workstation. Over the past year, I've put it through all kinds of real-world tests. Video editing, photo editing, some occasional 3D modeling, and of course, everyday productivity. So if you've been eyeing this machine, or if you're just curious how it handles after a year of use, I've got plenty of insights for you in this video. But I also want to talk about whether it's worth waiting for the next iteration. In my opinion though, it may not be worth waiting. Unless of course, Lenovo shocks us all with something like the Ryzen AI Max chipset coming out in this device. But I am not holding my breath for that. Meanwhile, this current model might start going on sale soon, so maybe that's an angle to consider. The RTX 4050 version with 32 gigs of RAM and an IPS display retails at $1699. The RTX 4060 version with 32 gigs of RAM and the mini LED display retails at $1899. Now both versions come with the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H, and in my opinion, it's worth the extra $200 to go for the better spec GPU model. But you can check the live pricing in the description below if you're curious and you do wanna make a purchase. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission but at no extra cost to you, but of course that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now here's the TLDR likes and dislikes after one year of use. What I love. Ultra book design and build quality. It's a nice middle ground, not super thin, but definitely more portable than a typical workstation. And next is that it comes with mid-range workstation performance. So thanks to the 100 watt maximum graphics power, you're not bottlenecked in GPU heavy tasks. The RTX 4060, great for video editing, 3D modeling, or any GPU acceleration tasks. Plus you get 32 gigs of RAM, which is a nice base for most multitasking and creator workflows. Mini LED at 165 hertz refresh rate. That display comes in the RTX 4060 model with the mini LED. The SD card reader, hugely convenient for creators, runs cool and quiet even under heavy loads. The fan noise is pretty reasonable. Large trackpad and numpad. These both feel very comfortable for extended use. And the numpad is a great plus for creator workflows. What I don't love, touchscreen but no pen compatibility. A yoga device that doesn't support pen is a little baffling to me. That would have been huge, especially for digital artists or just simply note takers who really need a nice opportunity to have some pen input. Consider a different model or brand uh, if you're looking for pen compatibility. Now the Legion Pro 5i is faster at similar or sometimes lower price points. So if you want raw performance and that's your priority, you might wanna go for that. Battery life. Realistically, four to five hours for normal usage, two to three hours for heavier tasks like photo editing or Photoshop work. Um, but you can get eight hours if you really, you know, throttle the settings and, you know, turn down the brightness and go on battery saver mode and all that jazz. Be aware of the RTX 4050 model. That one ships with an IPS display, not the mini LED. So don't buy it expecting the fancy panel. 64 gigs of RAM in an RTX 4070 only available outside the US. Super bummer. And then performance dips on battery power. Not massive, but enough that if you're doing time sensitive exports, maybe out of Premiere Pro, I would keep it plugged into the charger. For example, a nine minute 4K clip exports in two minutes and 17 seconds plugged in and two minutes and 36 seconds on battery power. If you expand that nine minute clip to say like an hour project, that could save you lots and lots of minutes on the export time. So just keep that in mind. Glossy display. The reflection can be distracting. I'd recommend a matte protector if you can't stand the glare off of these OLED displays like me. All right, when Lenovo calls this machine a Yoga Pro, they're implying it's both sleek and well-crafted like an Ultrabook, but with a lot more power under the hood. It has an Ultrabook design, but it's not feather light. I would not consider this a super light, super on the go friendly device. It comes in at 4.70 pounds. Uh, so it's no MacBook Air or Zenbook S16 OLED. It's chunkier and heavier than many other, you know, 16 inch ultra books. However, it's still thinner and lighter than your classic, you know, workstation or gaming laptop. It's about 0.71 inches thick. It slides into most backpacks really nicely, uh, but you will feel the weight if you're carrying it around all day. The overall aesthetic is clean and modern, no wild gamer RGB or flashy accents. It's very subdued, it's very professional, and definitely has the yoga design and language 
built into the device. Now let's talk about the build quality. The chassis feels solid. Over the last year, it's withstood a typical wear and tear with no major scratches or loose parts uh, surfacing on the device. The hinge remains smooth, letting me open and close the laptop easily with one hand. And uh, this, this, but typical to the yoga devices of the past, this does not fully swing out into a two-in-one device that you know goes into tent mode. It stops at the 180 degree angle. So that is nice though, no matter what angle you need it at, you're not hindered by that, you know, 45, you can open it up all the way, you know, pull it in, whatever you wanna do. So it's got some nice flexibility with the viewing angle. This device comes with a nice large trackpad and really good palm rejection. I do like that it is a large glass trackpad. It's a manual click trackpad. And so I feel like as far as the usability of this device for creators on the go who aren't bringing a mouse along, it is an excellent track trackpad. Super quiet, very easy to use, really great touch recognition and click recognition. Uh, here's a quick sample of me using both the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear for yourself what they sound like. And also the keyboard complements that to be very quiet as well. So if you're in a quiet office space or classroom, both the keyboard and trackpad will not be a bother to others. And of course you have a full size numpad as mentioned earlier in some of the highlights of this device. One of the biggest selling points for me is the mini LED display that has a 165 Hertz refresh rate, but that only comes in the RTX 4060 configuration. If you opt for the RTX 4050 version, you get an IPS panel that's not nearly as bright or color accurate. Now the spec sheet for the mini LED does say 425 nits. I'm getting 100% sRGB, 90% Adobe RGB, and 97% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0.79. This is perfectly fine for most color critical work. It's not 100% Adobe RGB, but it is close enough that I can trust it for video editing and photo editing. Now, if you choose the RTX 4050 model, you'll still get the 165 Hertz refresh rate, but not as much color accuracy or brightness. Now, this is a glossy surface. That can be quite annoying. For me personally, I get annoyed that it almost looks like a mirror in bright environments. Personally, I hate glossy displays. So what I would do, as something I did similar with the P16 is I'd put a matte screen protector on this device. What that does is it cuts away that glare and makes it a much better viewing experience. Now, another plus is the port selection. It feels very generous compared to other laptops in its category. You have two USB type A's, an SD card reader, and a dedicated power adapter, as well as HDMI, two USB type C's, and a headphone jack. Would you consider that the Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i has the perfect port selection. Let's talk about why this laptop outperforms a lot of other ultrabooks with dedicated GPUs, like the Dell XPS 16, for example, with an NVIDIA RTX 4050 or 4060. And honestly, the XPS also has the 4070 and this still outperforms it with a 4060. And that is the fact that this laptop allows 100 watts of maximum graphics power. Now this is crucial because other laptops like the Dell XPS 16 only allow 60 to 80 watts of maximum graphics power. And so with this device, you get no bottlenecks. The fact that Lenovo allows up to 100 watts means that you can get near desktop level performance in tasks like rendering or real-time playback in Premiere Pro. Sure, it's not an RTX 4080 or a 4090, but for mid-range tasks, it's quite impressive. For 3D modeling, the RTX 4050 version scores a 180 in 3ds Max and a 252 in Autodesk Maya. For the RTX 4060, the 3DS Max gets a 223, and the Maya gets a 319. Now, if you're frequently in 3D modeling apps, you'll see a noticeable jump with the RTX 4060. Video editing, the RTX 4050, exports a nine minute 4K clip in two minutes and 47 seconds. This RTX 4060, two minutes and 17 seconds, so a little bit faster. But the bigger difference is going to be seen in the 6K B-RAW export. For the RTX 4050, 20 minutes and 36 seconds versus the 6K B-RAW export out of the RTX 4060 at 13 minutes and 28 seconds. So there's a significant time savings if you're handling 6K resolution footage. If you're serious about content creation, I would definitely pick the RTX 4060 version. Not only do you get the bigger GPU, but you're gonna have the mini LED display as well. Now, you might want even more RAM and you might want a bigger GPU, but unfortunately, if you're in the US, you don't have that option. Some regions outside the US do get a 64 gig model and they get the RTX 4070, not fair. 
but that's not how it happens here in the US. We don't have that option available. Now, speaking of different configurations, the laptop does ship with one one terabyte M.2 drive, but there's also a secondary slot so you can add an additional M.2 drive. So it's pretty nice for the upgrade path. For a laptop pushing 100 watts GPU power, it's surprisingly cool and quiet. For the 4K export, you're seeing about 33 to 38 decibels of fan noise, much quieter than a lot of laptops that are pushing 45 to 50 decibels of fan noise. And for the thermals, it's 47 to 64 degrees Celsius, which is quite tame, especially under the heaviest of exports and 3D renders. If you run it in quiet mode, export times do dip a little bit to about three minutes and nine seconds for the 4K project compared to the previous that I mentioned, two minutes and 17 seconds, but you're going to keep those fans nice and quiet. Now, this is where I've got to be candid. Lenovo claims big battery life on the spec sheet, but in real usage, it's not that miraculous. With normal settings, about four to five hours, just browsing, emailing, and doing normal productivity work. Two to three hours if I'm doing photo editing or any creator tasks that tap into the GPU. If you do throttle the system, say silent mode, 20% screen brightness, window battery saver mode turned on, you can get closer to the eight hours. But at that point, the user experience does suffer a little bit. The display doesn't look as good and everything's a little bit slower. So yes, eight hours is definitely possible on this device, but it's not something I do daily. It defeats the whole purpose of having a powerful laptop on the go, in my opinion. So just bring the charger with you, bump the settings down if you need to save battery life, but overall know that the charger will need to be handy. Now you might be thinking, should I hold off for the next iteration, the refresh, the next gen Yoga Pro 9i? I've been hearing whispers that the next version might offer around 15% better performance and improve battery life. Oh wait, I didn't hear any rumors. That's always what they promise is about 15% better battery life. So that's fairly standard and incremental on the CPU and GPU generational jumps. Is it worth the wait? My honest take, not really. Unless they shock us with something crazy, as I mentioned earlier, like a Ryzen AI Max chipset in this device, but that's probably not gonna happen, then typical Lenovo will choose Intel's latest launch of Intel Core Ultra, which will probably boost about a 15% performance increase and battery increase, which is not game changing. For me, I would focus on the sale price of this model. Once the new model is announced, you're bound to see some really nice price cuts. And at that point, I would strike while the iron's hot, especially if you've been waiting for this model. If you snag the RTX 4060 plus the mini LED at a nice sale price, I think you'll be more than satisfied. Sure, the new one might be slightly faster or slightly more efficient, but it's not going to blow this one out of the water by any stretch of the imagination. And, you know, knock on wood, when I get the other one into review, I might have to eat my words, but standard iterations seems to be that. So if you ask me, don't hold out hoping for a huge leap unless you want to gamble on the hypothetical AMD-based variant with the next level AI performance. But again, it's pretty speculation. Historically, Lenovo Yoga lineup has stuck with Intel for the targeted models in the US. After using the Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i for about a year, here's the skinny. It bridges the gap between Ultrabook and massive, thick, chunky gaming laptop. It's not gonna be as thin as an Ultrabook, but it's not gonna be as thick as a gaming laptop. It's not gonna have as much performance as a gaming laptop, but it's gonna have more performance than a thin Ultrabook. So it has that nice sweet spot in performance. That 100 watt total GPU budget keeps it feeding really good performance to your system and you're not gonna have bottlenecks like on other systems that cap it at 60 to 80 watts of maximum graphics power. The battery life is decent if you tone down the performance, but that kind of defeats the whole point. So just make sure you bring that charger along with you and so it'll keep you going throughout your workday. I do wish it offered pen support. It is a touch screen, but it doesn't offer pen support, which kind of struggles in my head with the whole yoga branding. Classically, they've pretty much had pen support all the time. Does it still hold up? Absolutely. Even after a year, I rarely find myself wanting more power unless comparing benchmarks with like full-blown gaming laptops or heavier workstations. For typical content creation, it's, it's still more than enough for my use case on the day-to-day. Who should buy it? Who should skip this model? You should buy it if you want a bounce between Ultrabook portability and mid-range workstation gaming laptop performance. If you're a content creator, especially if you're doing video editing or 3D modeling, I would definitely check out the RTX 4060 with 32 gigs of RAM. I think that'll be a good sweet spot for you. Well, it's not sweet spot. That's the best one you can get if you're not outside the US. Anyway, you'll love the color accurate display, high refresh rate, both for creators and really nice, general, smooth gaming, well, you know, moderate gaming. You need a full-size SD card reader, healthy port selection. This has got you covered. You value a cool and relatively quiet machine more than you value maximum performance. This is a great spot. Now you should skip this model if you absolutely require pen input. 
The lack of pen compatibility is a glaring omission for the Yoga device. And I check out the Asus ProArt P16 if you're looking for the same GPU performance, or I would check out the Lenovo Yoga 7i 16 inch model if you're looking for a two in one capability and don't need as much GPU performance. You want maximum performance for a lower cost. I would skip this and go for the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i. It could be better and cheaper with higher performance because it has a maximum graphics power of 135 watts instead of the 100 watts. You need eight hours plus battery life in normal usage without crippling the laptop's performance or the brightness, go for something else. You prefer a matte display or absolutely can't stand glare, then this would not be for you. However, I would recommend doing a you know matte display screen protector. You're holding out for the 64 gigs of RAM version with the RTX 4070 in the US. Sadly, it's probably not gonna happen. Well, it could happen next year, but probably not right now. The question is, where do you stand and are you gonna buy it? Links in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase or check the live pricing. Otherwise, click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.